or good afternoon and good evening to some of you guys. I am super duper duper excited to do the design for a new feature for DoorDash, the food delivery system. Um, if you guys never heard of it, it's similar to Uber Eats or Postmates or Grubhub or something similar to that. Uh, so we are going to be doing some user flows, sketches, wireframes, we're going to be doing the full process. And I know some of you who've already watched my streams before are really excited about that, that I do go go full, do, go do and do, I go and do the full process. Sorry, it is really early for me. Uh, I want to take a look at the chat. Tell me where you guys are coming from and your names. Um, I already see your names. So sorry. Yes. Um, just where you're coming from. I'm from Los Angeles. Hey, Laura, good to see you. And Ariana, yeah, awesome. Yeah, as you guys tell me where you're coming from, I'm gonna be showing you now the schedule for the day that you can take a look at. So obviously we got me at 7.30, we got Paul Tranny, we got drawing and painting with Jess Talmanic, illustrator design uh, daily creative challenge with Andrew at 11.30, video editing with Olivia and Zach Fields at 12, two o'clock, Daily Creative Challenge with Jesse Showalter. And then 2.30, Design in the Dark with Happy Impulse and Andrew Hulk, Hulkerdell. Sorry if I butchered that, but yeah, that's your schedule for the day. All right, so let's get into it. <laughs> um, so yes, like I said, we are designing a new feature for DoorDash. And the focus for today is really going to be on designing within an existing app, having that constraint. Oftentimes, new designers are working on projects that are just kind of a free for all. Design whatever you feel, design whatever solution you feel with whatever sort of UI style you want. And that's totally awesome and great. But typically, most companies are hiring designers to work within an existing app. So you might be working on a new feature or working on improving the, the current platform or the current app or product. So that's why we want to have this focus for today. For those of you that want to be working at a company that probably already has an existing product. The other thing that we're going to focus on is strategic thinking. Even if you're completely a new designer, you should be thinking about strategy early on because this is something that's going to help differentiate you from other designers. And then finally, we have process. We're gonna talk a little bit more, like I said earlier, about user research, a little bit about flows, wireframes, et cetera. So we're gonna be talking about the full process. Okay, now I'm actually in the process of, hire, uh, of interviewing with Facebook. And something that they are looking for is somebody who has good visual design skills, for sure, but really thinks about product thinking. So that's strategic thinking, that's what we're focusing on. And the other thing that they really care about is self-awareness and being proactive. So we're really thinking about being, you know, the designer has to think about it all a little bit. And we're gonna be doing a little bit of all of it today. All right, so if it's your first time using Adobe XD, no worries. I'm gonna be talking about some basics um, as far as doing some artboards and button styles and typography and so forth like that. So you should feel really comfortable. Those of you who are new, um, who are pretty comfortable with XD and with the process, maybe we will dive more into strategy and that, that's something that you can start to learn from. So um, yeah, I'm gonna take a look at the chat here just to see where you guys are coming from, from India. Anish from India, Jennifer from Maryland. Awesome, we got Sean from Germany, cool. 
Yeah, I'll be checking the chat, making sure that you guys are feeling comfortable and feeling good. Miriam says she's excited for the live. Yay, I'm super excited too. Yeah, if you're just coming in, let me know where you're coming from. And if you've used XD before, that's going to be really helpful for me to know. Um, I like to make this experience as collaborative as possible. So I'm going to be asking for your feedback as we're going through this. Like, what do you guys think? Should we do this? Should we do that? So I really, really love for you guys to communicate as well through this chat. I'm going to be checking that um, all throughout today's and tomorrow's sessions. So let's design together. Let's get into it. All right, so the next thing I'm going to talk about here is what the next two days will look like. So again, we're doing some basics today. We're going to go over customer journey map. If you've never heard about that before, then I'm going to be really excited to talk to you about um, this um, this map because I find it super, super helpful. Uh, and then we're going to go over user flows, sketches, wireframes, and high fidelity if we have time. And then tomorrow we're going to do high fidelity as well as prototyping and sharing so talking about sharing it with other users doing some user testing talking a little bit about that so full process full ux process who am i who's talking this whole time if you don't know me uh, i'm elise i am an adobe xd instructor i also teach at general assembly and i mentor at springboard i'm obviously a ux designer and i also create content on TikTok, instagram and youtube so i have a lot of fun with that if you want to follow my content. I try to create fun, educational, and goofy videos all around UX design and also just around being a good person sometimes. So <laughs> follow me there if you'd like. And let's talk strategy. Let's get into it. Business goals. Every time I start a project, I want to understand what the business goals are. Now, if you're working on a project right now, all on your own, create a business goal. Go for it. There's no, you can be the person that's, you know, creating this goal and that's, it still gives you still a constraint and a North star. So for us, we're going to say DoorDash wants to increase engagement from inactive or infrequent users. So someone's maybe already downloaded the app and they use it maybe here or there a couple times a year, or they don't really use it at all. They want to increase the engagement from those users. So how are they going to do that? I love this little slide here, um, this, this little picture. It says, where do we start? Well, how would you design a product that lets users make pasta? Let's see. First, I'll pick a font. Helvetica, no, Times New Roman. So I love this little, <laughs> love this little drawing because it's like we don't start with going into high fidelity designs. We have to understand people, right? So let's start. Customer journey map. Now, this is something, before I get into it, this is from the plugin, white, the whiteboard plugin from Adobe. This is right here, customer journey map, but they have all types of UX exercises for you to be able to learn from and to be able to use. And it already looks professional. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to create this. It's already created for you. You just gotta fill it in. So this is a great way to learn about other ways of doing some uh, UX exercises, okay? All right, so let's get into the customer journey map here. Who is our customer for DoorDash? Who are we trying to target? Well, we're trying to target actually power users. I know, first we said we're trying to target inactive people, right? But let, let's give me a, give me a moment. We're actually trying to target the, the power user who wants to be able to share this product with other people. Okay, so we want people to share it word of mouth, etc. So who is our persona? She is Sarah. She lives in LA. She's 40 years old. And she loves making new friends and making other people around her feel really good. And she's an avid DoorDash user, a power user. So what is the scenario that she might be using this product? Well, uh, she just moved into a new apartment and her neighbor just did the most neighborly favor. She's never even met her neighbor. Her neighbor took in all of her um, packages, her delivery packages that were left out on her front yard for the last for the whole weekend. And she took them into her house to keep to make them safe so that nobody would take them. 
Okay. And so Sarah wants to get her neighbor something really nice without having any effort because she doesn't know her neighbor. She doesn't know what to get her. She doesn't want to make homemade brownies. She's not that type of person. So she wants something that's going to be really easy to give to her neighbor. All right, so now let's go into the journey map. We're mapping out each phase of what Sarah is doing, how she's interacting with this new, uh, with the product and these new features. So phase one, Sarah comes home from her vacation, she sees that her packages were that were delivered are gone. Oh no, she's so sad. She's thinking, man, I should have waited for my delivery. I'm sad that people would steal from me in my neighborhood. She just moved there, she's really sad. So the next, phase, the next phase, her neighbor delivers her packages. And she's thinking, wow, I'm so glad to have a nice neighbor that looks out for me. I wish I could show her my appreciation. And then the next phase is she finds her neighbor on DoorDash. She sees that her neighbor has a DoorDash account. And she sees that it's her favorite um, coffee or her favorite dessert is on DoorDash. So she's like, I'm going to send this to my neighbor. This sounds really good. I can already send her something with as little effort from me as possible, but shows her that, you know, I care, that I'm really thankful. And then finally, the next phase is her neighbor acknowledges her gift. She's thinking, man, I feel so connected to my community and it feels so good to give. All right. So. We are creating the ability now on DoorDash to be able to gift to other people. Gift a sandwich, gift a coffee, gift a croissant. Um, and so this is what we're gonna be wanting to think about. All right. Now the final thing I'm gonna show you before we get into the designs is user flows. Now if you've never done any user flows, I highly suggest it. Um, this is, first I mapped out what the current flow is. I wanted you guys to understand what DoorDash is if you've never seen it or never heard of it, and also to get an understanding of their UI style before we start designing within the DoorDash app or the DoorDash realm, okay. So the flow goes, currently, right now, this is how you order a product. Now, I always wanna understand when I'm starting to create a new feature in a product, what is the current product like? What is the current flow like? Because I don't wanna break their flow. I don't wanna do anything that's to super out of what their, um, their current way that they design, the current way that they think about interactions, the way they think about UI elements. I don't wanna break that. I want it to be cohesive. So that's why I understand, I wanna understand the current flow. So right now they go from the home screen and then the user needs to select a restaurant. So here we selected McDonald's. Then they get to select a food item. So they are selected a double quarter pounder with cheese. And then they check out and then they submit their order. Okay, that's what the current flow is like. So when I was designing my flow now, I was going through that same flow experience. So yeah, home, select restaurant, select your food item, add to cart. But the thing that I changed is I have the ability to add a new recipient. It's not just going to yourself, it's now going to her neighbor. And she can actually manually input that neighbor's information or she can search um, for a DoorDash user. So she doesn't, if she doesn't know the address to someone she wants to send it to, she can just search for them. Easy peasy. The alternative to this is that I have her go from home to, hey, there's a new feature alert. There's a new feature. Hey, you can gift something to someone. From there, she can go and find this DoorDash user, search first name and last name, select the user, and then select that user's favorite restaurant and favorite food item. So those are the two ways I'm going about it, right? And so again, I wanna think about the current flow, not breaking the current flow. I wanted to think about how do you highlight a new feature in a current design and not taking away from the current design, all right? So this is an actual, uh, it's called Miro.com. It's free for you to use for your first three project. I highly recommend using it for creating user flows. 
Cool. Let's get into sketches and get into wireframing. Now, I am going to show you my sketches, and then I also created a link for you to download my sketches and to download the high fidelity screens for DoorDash so you can design these as well as I'm going along, especially if you have two monitors, it's gonna be really easy for you to look at me and then design in real time. If not, totally okay, you can download them and later on rewatch this and just pause, design, pause, design, right? Watch my video and keep going back and forth. And that's a really great way for you to start learning and designing at the same time. Uh, um, so I'm going to share that link with you guys now. Do, 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 do. Somebody said, Ariana said, this is a pretty cool idea. Yeah. Laura says, it's awesome that we get to see the whole process. Cool. <laughs> All right, so let me share that link with you guys so you have it. So if you have your XD file up and ready, you can start designing with me. So I'm going to copy this link and share it in the chat. Yes, everybody gets to have it. So in here, you can download my sketches. And in here, you can download the screens for the current app. And if you don't want to design in real time with me, no worries. Just watch and enjoy and learn. Cool. Now I'm going to have to adjust my mouse pad because it completely died on me. So let me just plug that guy in. As I'm doing that, let me see if you guys are saying anything over there. If you guys are good. We have Sanrio. Sanrio. Hey, Sanrio. Nice name. Sorry, guys. My trackpad just died. Let's see if that works. Yeah, we're back in business. Woohoo. All right. So let's start with the beginning. Here is the first sketch. And I wanted you guys to see kind of all of my cross outs. Like, let's say this, let's say this. No, let's say this, right? It's, sketching is, a, is it's supposed to be just your first ideas. It's not, nothing that you're really attached to. So we're probably gonna even change it from here a little bit. Uh, but what I wanted it to be was um, when you first access the site, that they would say, hey, there's a new feature. You can send your friend this gift. Okay, and I want it to, it to be unobtrusive. I don't want a big old pop-up right here. We always want to make sure we try to eliminate pop-ups as much as possible because it can really break the person's flow. So just having this little indication here, or this is probably the indication we're going to use that they already have within their design system. Okay. Then from there, she's going to search first and last name of the person she wants to send it to, and then she gets to see the results. This is, see how ugly my drawings are? It's totally okay. Then she can see her neighbor's name. She can see her neighbor's favorite items. And then she can see, okay, these are um, some food items that have no delivery fee. These are items that deliver under 40 minutes, etc. So it's very similar to this experience somewhat. She can see the food item. And in this case, instead of being able to select any sort of preferences, it already says all the preferences are applied. We already know your neighbor, no need to make any changes. And then she adds it to her cart. Simple, boom, that's what we're doing to today. Let's get into wireframes. So we always start with wireframes. We don't go into high fidelity. We will start to use some of their, their typography and so forth, because we already know what that is. But this is, a, we're just trying to make things not beautiful, just to understand the architecture and the layout of the screens at this point. So first thing I do is create an artboard. Now the shortcut for artboard, if you've never created one before, is A, okay? And then I would just select from here, Samsung Galaxy, and that's how I create an artboard. Now, instead of redesigning the homepage, why do I need to redesign it? I'm not really touching much of this at all. I'm only gonna be redesigning this little notification here, this little ad here. So that's why I just have this image here already on the artboard and I'm just gonna be redesigning this thing. Okay, so here, I'm just gonna make this little rectangle. So R for rectangle is the shortcut. 
and you're just going to drag it along to make this shape. Okay, R for rectangle and just drag it over. There we go. Now I'm just going to put in here the text to create text, T for text. And then I'm going to put send food beverage item. Let me see what I wrote. As a thank you. I'm just going to say send as a thank you to someone special. See, I'm already changing it. Now you're going to be like, oh my gosh, that's atrociously big. Oh my God. Yes, it is. So I'm going to escape, hit escape to get out of text mode. And then I'm just going to drag this little blue indicator to make it much smaller. Now, right now, the, the font is, uh, is defaulted to uh, Adobe Clean. For you, it could be something else. And I'm going to change it to the font that I'm going to be using. This is the only thing I'm going to do that's more high fidelity um, because we already have the font, but I'm not going to be attached to actually creating the actual sizes and stuff right now. I'm just going to eyeball it. Now, the font that I'm using is going to be Brother 1816. This is an Adobe font, so it'll be very easy for you to be able to download for free. If you do not have this yet, do not worry. Just use whatever font is your default. Doesn't matter. Okay, cool. Now I am going to do, 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 just leave that as is and I'm going to make it prettier later. Don't even worry about that. There we go. There is our um, our little type. There's is our little section. And I'm probably just gonna add just one more thing, the button so that they can say, send gift. Cool, there's our button. So R for rectangle again, T for text, super easy to create a button. Now the only thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna group them. So how I group is I select this, I um, this object and then I shift and select the object behind and then command G is the way to make that a group command G okay, or you could right click and say group so I want these to be a group so I can move these together at the same time cool send gift there we go now I think like I'm not sure about the the word send gift, because then I'm like, do people think that it's a gift card? Um, something that I'm thinking about right now, it says send food beverage as a thank you to someone special. Should it say send gift or send food beverage? Or think about that, guys, if you guys have any ideas. You like that? Do you not like that? Next thing, let's go into this next screen. So now after she said, clicked, yeah, I want to send a gift to somebody, She's going to go into this screen where she can search for someone in particular. So first name, last name, and search. I have the first name and last name because we don't want to just be able to probably search for anybody. Maybe if you want to stalk someone and you just want to send them stuff, you don't know their full name. You want to make it maybe a little bit more difficult versus being able to see everybody, all the, uh, like anybody who has the first name Mary. Um, the other thing it makes it easier for uh, for DoorDash to be able to find that recipient because they have so many users. So if you put your first and last name. Now, this is something that I actually am taking from the Target registry experience. So I took a lot of inspiration from that. When you are taking inspiration from another company or another um, product, you want to make sure you talk about that when you're talking about your process. It's important. So I would say, hey, yeah, I took some examples from some registry, um, registry type of experiences. Now, this is a um, little close button. I don't like to create icons from scratch. Um, I like to just use them within this amazing plugin. Icons for design. There we go. And I'm just gonna search close. Now I get all these little close icons. Yes! I'm just gonna take this one and 
and it already plops in right there and I'm just gonna drag it over. So if you don't have this plugin yet, Icons for Design, I'd highly suggest it, especially when you're in this phase of creating low fidelity. Anybody know why it's important to have low fidelity? I explained it a little bit earlier, but anybody? Let me know. Why do we create these low fidelity? So I'm going to go into the text shortcut and I'm going to say search recipient in DoorDash. Now, if you are just arriving, I put into the chat these sketches that I'm working off of for you guys to be able to design also in real time. Cool. All right, so then um, I'm gonna make this a bolder font. Maybe a bit bigger. Now, if this is something you've never done before is create character styles, I highly recommend starting to do that early on in your process. I know there's a lot of things to remember as you're beginning in UX or beginning in XD, sorry. So how you create a character style, super simple. You just select that character or that typography style and you click this little add button over here on the left hand panel. And now it's created a character style. And I'm just gonna say that this is an H2 for now. This is my heading style number two. Now why this is important is because later down the road when I wanna start adjusting all of these header styles, maybe I wanna make it red <laughs> you see here or maybe I want to make it you know I want to change it to a 30 font etc I can adjust make that adjustment to all of my headings um, all h2s instead of having to change each individual one this is extremely important in creating a design system and making sure that your designs are consistent this is Oftentimes, something I see with a lot of new designers that having consistent designs is a challenge. So that's what I highly recommend. Okay, now the thing that I was going to start doing here is I was going to make this little um, rectangle for a field, but I, I remembered that I used their or I took one of a screenshot from their um, from their app to see what is their current style. Now I know for, for wireframes, you could totally go this route and it's totally okay. But because I already placed it here and I have an idea of what their UI style is, I'm just gonna make it look a little bit more like what their style is. So I'm just gonna put this little line. Boop, there's my field. And then text for first name. I'm not gonna make that bold and smaller. Let's. Put I give that like a 12 font and now this is my field I'm gonna group them command G to group and now it's like my little group here and this might be advanced but some of you will know what I'm talking about and I'm gonna do command K to make it a component this is something that I'm going to reuse over and over and over so I want just like the typography I shared if I want to make a change to this master component here and I make it red it's gonna reflect on all the other fields so instead of having to redo it every single field later on when I change my mind because you change your mind a thousand times when you're designing you just have to do it once okay that's why i'm making it a component so i did command k or you can just do this little plus button over here by components two ways of going about it now i know this might be like a little much for people who are very new if this is too much making colors character styles components don't worry about it for now just keep moving forward just design that's what i did when i first started i was like i don't know how to make these things. I'm just gonna make, you know, I'm just gonna put them on the, the artboard and that's it. And that's like as good as I can do right now. And that's totally fine. All right, here we go. I have a search button. I'm gonna do Command K and make this a button. And then we have the next section here, which is basically a circle for their profile and their name. So I'm gonna do E for a circle.
And then I'm going to say first and last name. Actually, let's just say Peggy. Peggy Sue. That's the name. And then the location. Now we have the name and the location because there might be many Peggy Sue's. She may not have her picture. So we want to have the location so that the person who's giving Peggy a gift can recognize, okay, it's Peggy. I maybe see a picture and I see the name. This is definitely the person. You don't want to send a gift to the wrong person, right? Okay. So now I'm going to make all of this a group and I'm going to use this other um, feature called repeat grid. I just turned it on up here in the upper right hand corner. So now when I drag these along, just repeats that same element over and over again. So if I make a change now to Peggy Sue here, it's going to reflect on all the other repeats of it. Super simple, right? Okay. So what do you guys think about, this is my next thing, although, doo -doo -doo. I don't know if I saw all your, Lise, is there a shortcut for font weight? Oh, yes. So here's the shortcut for font weight. I use it all the time. Um, if I have that, this selected, command B, command B, at least for iOS, command B. Makes it super simple. Okay, now in my sketches, I had this like button design here to say select a user, but I also feel like maybe it's understandable enough to just have that person's name bold that they can select this person either by selecting their face or their name. What do you guys think? Do you think that I should have a button in here? Let's see. I have a button in here that says select or do you think it's good enough without? I'm going to give you those two options while I move on to the next thing. Yeah, you tell me select or not. Not sure. Okay. Next screen. A for artboard, there's my artboard. I'm gonna drag it down here. And then I have this screen here where you can, after you've selected Peggy Sue, you can say, okay, I either wanna filter by under $5, five to $10, etc." And I took this filtering look from here. So we're gonna like make a similar filtering look from here. Again, we're trying to work under the constraints of the current UI design system of DoorDash. Then they have, um, so we're gonna have some options um, under 40 minutes, et cetera. So that experience is gonna look very much like this. Let's get designing. Okay, we got, um, Michael said, make the cart selectable. Great. Um, good. George said, good enough with tap on list or an icon. Cool. Michael said, no need for the button, no button. Okay, no button. I'm gonna remove it. Boom, done. Okay, so now let's go into creating this um, little icon, this little left arrow icon. I'm, I'm gonna use my little icons for design plugin. So I'm just gonna search back and I do a little back button little back arrow here. Okay. I want the back arrow instead of the close arrow on this one. Does anyone know why? Why I would want X for this screen and why I would want a back arrow for this screen? This is kind of more, you know, advanced, but I'm going to do it. Um, let me know. Why do you guys think that is? Oh, Raphael said, if you can choose multiple recipients, then maybe some sort of checkbox near the names. Yeah, that's a great idea, Raphael. Now that would probably be like a, a version two, like, oh, wow, this is performing well. People want to start doing, selecting multiple people. Um, that's a great idea. Love that. 
when I have ideas like that, as I'm designing, I usually have another separate list of future iteration ideas or ways to even make it better. And then um, Anthony says, you're a complete beginner. You want to learn. Yes, you are in the right place, Anthony. You are. This is for beginners. And if you're just joining, I would suggest watching from the beginning because... Um, later down the road, not don't don't leave now. <laughs> From the beginning, watch it later. And I'm going over real basics for you, so it should be very should be exciting. All right, so here we have the person's the person's um, face and their name. Doo -doo -doo. And then we're going to have the title. I'm going to use. Actually, I'm going to use an, a, a heading here because I didn't include one in my sketch, but I think this should say like send gift. So she remembers what she's doing on this screen. Oh. Now I'm taking a look, okay, I'm taking a look at their heading style. So they have this one with a, your account on the left-hand side. They have a larger one with it below the back arrow. And then they have one here above. So there's a couple, there's two styles here. I think I'm gonna go with this first one, send gift. Um, because this seems like it's more for something more prominent like the um, like the restaurant page. So I'm going to make this a little bit less prominent. And I'm adding it over to character styles. Why is it adding? Is it the same? Oh, that's why. The same as that character style too. Okay, cool. Let's see, does anyone have an answer? Laura says the arrow for back is so the user could easily return to the filtered results and select the next one he or she wants to check. Yes! Great job! <laughs> that was a great answer. So there is this back arrow because maybe she got the wrong person. So she just needs to easily go back and select the right person. This one has an X because this is saying, hey, if you want to use this new feature, there is no back button to go. Um, there is no need to go to a back button to go to home because if you just exit, you're already at the home. Okay, so this is a new feature experience. That's why we have the X back arrow for going back to a previous experience because she's going to need to interact potentially and find a, a different recipient if she got it wrong. Great answer, Laura. All right, so let's move on to creating this next favorite items. I am going to create now. Uh, an H3. Maybe. I'm just going to say favorite items. Cool. And then we have these little filters. So I'm going to make them, oops, I'm going to make R for rectangle. I'm going to start as a rectangle shape for now until we go high fidelity. And then I have my text underneath that says under $5. Cool. There is my first filter. Now this is something I'm going to be reusing over and over and over again, right? So I'm going to make, want to make it this what? I'm, I know it's going to take too long for me to see your guys' answer, but just think about it in your heads. What is it? A component reusable element over and over and over again. And I make that doing Command K or right clicking and selecting um, do, 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 uh, make component, okay? So now I'm just gonna repeat this same thing over and over. Now we're starting off with a super low price because when you're gifting something as just like, you know, you just wanna give someone some a sandwich or um, 
a beverage, you don't want it to be, you probably don't want it to be spending a whole lot of money. This is small tokens of appreciation. If you want to get someone a big old gift, probably use Amazon or something like that, right? So this is for um, people that you may not know so well that you want to just give them a little something, something, make them feel good, part of the community. Okay. Now I'm looking at this and I did it incorrectly. So here are the filters. I put the title above the filters and I did not need to do that. So I need to take this down here. So it's always good to refer back to the current design. Are you, if you're doing things right, if you're not, like my design had, my sketch had that design, but I have to keep remembering this is an early sketch. This is something I did really quick in like one minute. So it's not gonna be perfect. And I'm improving upon it in the wireframe stage. And then I'm improving upon it yet again in the high fidelity stage, constantly iterating, constantly improving upon it. And this is again, something that every hiring manager is gonna ask, talk to me about the progression of your design, how you went from, from A to Z. Talk to me about that iterative process. So you might say, I started with this and then I went here and I went there with this feature. And that's what they're looking for is not someone who just lays it out on the page and go, that's great, that's cool, perfect, everything's great. No, you want somebody who's constantly thinking how to improve upon your design. Okay, our for rectangle, we're making this um, picture here. And then we're gonna have the title and then the price underneath. So I'm gonna just say food item one. And I'm gonna make this smaller. And I'm gonna make that my H3. Do -do -do. And then I'm gonna put my price. Cool. Now I also had the ability, I was, I was thinking like, if we're looking at Peggy Sue's profile and we see what her favorite items that she's, she's, she usually gets. I was thinking like, should we say something here? I kind of put it on the side here. Like, should we have an order history, like ordered 10 times in the last year or ordered or ordered 30 times? Or is there a way that we should like indicate that? Or do you think just saying favorite items is enough and we don't have to put in how often or how, how many times she's ordered a particular item? What are your guys' thoughts? And I'm gonna show you what two, those two look like. So here's one, like this is the food item and then this is the cost of it. Oh, so actually, what they do is they put the cost at the top and that's what's bold and this is not bold cool grouping that um and then so i was thinking should we put like ordered Or is it weird? I don't know. <laughs> is this weird? Ordered 40 times. Hmm. Is that weird, guys? Any answers there? Do, 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 do. Okay, Ariana said, I think maybe put last ordered, but not how many times. Okay, so this is what she's ordered last. Mm-hmm, that's an option for sure. Last ordered. Last ordered. I don't know. I think sometimes when I feel like it's kind of just not working, I just... I just like eliminate it and I'm like, okay, let's just get rid of that. The one thing that I did want to add that's different from this experience is because this is different from their normal experience in that most likely they're only going to be sending one thing, right? As a gift, I'm probably only going to send one latte or, or perhaps a latte and a croissant. Um, but we probably, because it's such a small order that we may want to have the cost of delivery 
up front here. Um, they do have cost of delivery doo, 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 on the home page here at the restaurant view. So that's why we don't have this restaurant view in ours because we don't need to look at all the restaurants. We're looking at items first, not restaurant first. But the cost of delivery is really important. So that is one thing that I think we need to have as well. Which is the delivery cost. So maybe like $2 delivery. This might not be enough space. Let me see how they do it again. Okay. They kind of just do it like right next to it. Cool. Great. <laughs> Kitty said ordered 40 times. No. <laughs> uh, thanks for that. That made my day. Just no. Uh, cool. So then let's just copy this. Uh, I'm going to group this and then I'm going to have a, um, I'm going to do recently ordered instead here. And then I'm going to do another one that says no small delivery fee. No small order delivery fee. So some, um, Oftentimes, if you're ordering like under $10, they add an additional fee. So this again, because this is probably more for people who are just going to give small orders, we want to have that potentially be a category, an important category for them. Cool. Second screen is done. All right. So we got three screens. We've got two more left to go. We might get into high fidelity today. That's for sure. Um, so let's move on to this next screen here. So this is the food item um, in their example here. They have a large image at the top and then the text on the bottom. So I am going to just reframe my, just my sketch a little bit. They have the back arrow. Actually, I am going to change my back arrow. I'm gonna see if they have a version like this because that's going to probably be really easy to just change really quick. Yep. Making it a little bit more like theirs. And then I'm going to make that a component. Command K, copy it and paste it over here. All right. Cool. So we have our little back arrow. We're going to have a large image at the top here. And then we're going to have the food item name. Let's decide on what we're going to send Peggy Sue, our just friendliest neighbor. Do we want to send her like a cinnamon roll? Do we want to send her <laughs> a latte? What, what do you think we should send? Because then we can start thinking about it for the title here. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to call it food item one for now but as you guys are giving me some ideas of like what we should send because we're going to start plopping in some images in here soon now this font is quite large that they use for their h1 here so i'm going to make that a character style and that's going to be my h1 because it's huge i'm kind of surprised they use this for it's just so big I would not have chosen that size, but you know what? We're following what they're doing here. So um, the only thing different here is we're going to just have some of the basic information. I'm just going to copy and paste that into here. It's going to be larger though. $4 to... $2 delivery fee, the food item. Okay, no, this is gonna be now sold by. Let's take a look at their example, how they do it. Hmm. None of them are exactly the way 
Yeah, it's a little bit different for our design. So I'm just going to have to put in the restaurant name over down below. And then we're going to say something like all preferences are applied. Okay, I'm going to look for a little check mark. And just drag that over here because we want it so that he knows or she knows that all of Peggy's preferences are applied for this food item. If she likes her latte hot with an extra shot, um, then we already know that all those are applied. And then we just need to have this little call to action at the bottom. goes all the way, extends all the way, and then it says add to cart $4. So how much is this? $6. Okay. There. Their price is over on the right-hand side. By the way, this is um, I, this is uh, Android, not uh, iPhone. If you are looking at a different DoorDash, okay. There we got our final look and feel. Mario says that is a really big size, isn't it? <laughs> Philip said I'm not agreeing. Oh, the sound keeps cutting out. Huh. Let me remove my headphones. I wonder if that's having an effect with the sound. You take those guys out. Um, okay, someone said, uh, Akili said, we need some color. Yes, wouldn't that be funny if I'm like, it's done, it's beautiful, here we go. Um, we don't put color in though until we got into the high fidelity stage. So we're talking about wireframes, we're talking about doing the full UX process, and you wanna make sure that you show this in all your case studies, that you're not just going from um, rough wires or rough sketches to high fidelity, that you're going through the full process. Okay. Sometimes you can go through straight to mid-fi and I've totally done that and that's okay in certain contexts. If I'm trying to go really fast, really quick, some companies may actually just have you go from sketches to high fidelity. So that is totally part of the process. But if you're a beginner, I would suggest going through this, this process of sketches mid, uh, and to wireframes to high fidelity because this is such a key part of the experience. Once you understand the process and why you're doing these parts of the processes, then later down the road, you can skip things. Sure, if you understand the repercussions of it. Alrighty, let's go into the final screen here. So, here is the name of the restaurant. Did anyone decide where we're going to Tim said no sound issues on my end. Oh, well, that's good. Oh, not when I'm talking, but when, okay. When the mic, okay, yeah, that's how the mic works so that you don't have to hear any background sound. <laughs> uh, what is the whole process? Okay, so we had the whole process, we, were t we had already talked about it earlier, which was going from research understanding business goals, going into user flows, personas, sketching out our designs, wireframing, high fidelity, user testing, iter iter the iterative process, right? So that's the whole process. Um, and that's what I'm referring to. Design systems and creating the high fidelity, that's kind of the last part of the process. Um, and honestly, we are starting now with a design system that's already created because this is for DoorDash. They already have a design system. We don't need to create a design system where we'd be working under the constraints of the current design system. They probably already have all of this ready for us. We just need a plug and play, honestly. <laughs> all right, so we have the title here. Um, then there's like some little like line to separate this. Um, and then it says items. And that is our character style three, or was it two? Two. Yep. Two. And then we have now this is really small. 
we need to make a new size for this. It's not bold. And it has like a number too. Okay, so I'll say one. Food item one. Oh yeah. Did we decide? Are we oh pumpkin spice latte? Ooh, yeah, that's really nice. Love that. Um pumpkin spice latte, cool. Does DoorDash have a design system? Yes. Um DoorDash, I'm sure, has a design system. We obviously just don't have access to it. <laughs> So we're going to just be pretending like, you know, as best we can to get as close to their design system as possible. This is not their actual typography, the typography they're using, Brother 816. This is the closest I could get to it. So if you are wanting to show in your designs a example of a redesign or a new feature on a current product, just get as close as you as you can to it. And that's all you can do because um, you won't have access to a company's design system. All right, let's move on. So we're gonna just say, I'm gonna put in these in the right order here. And then we have I'm just gonna put all this information here. Okay, so the thing that I've added, which is very different than theirs, is the ability to add a note. Now, I wanted it, I'm not going to design it, but I want to just show you in my user flows here. What I had decided is I wanted it, when you add a note, you can add a written note. So you can add like, hey, Peggy, thank you so much for picking up my packages. I really appreciate it. Or you could even add a video recording too, if you want to. So you can have a video, hey, hey mom, I'm so happy that you came to my graduation, whatever it is. And then you can send a recording as well. Um, so those are gonna be the two options for adding a note. And the the driver will either let the recipient know that hey this is a this is a um, gift order or the get the order itself will already include the written note on top of the food item or, or so forth. Okay, so that's kind of the idea behind it. And someone was asking about process. Maybe you missed this part. This is part of the process. Understanding the flow. This is basically every step the user is going to take on your app. Every single step. That's what we're mapping out before we start designing. So it's very, so it flows well, it makes sense, it's clear, and we have an understanding of the roadmap for the user before we just start designing. Okay, so here I'm going to say, um, add note. What do you guys think about the video feature? Um, I was like, would people use it? Is that a good idea? Maybe that's like not, I don't know if that's something we should add yet or not. I'm not sure. I was kind of iffy about it. Should it just be a written note? Which do I like? Ta -da. This looks, I guess, most like it. So add a note. Then we're gonna put in the recipient's information. I'm gonna grab this. Paste it down here. Oftentimes I'll just reuse elements from above and I'll just make it like, you know, smaller. If it needs to be smaller here. Their name. I'm going to go in, there's a little arrow here. So I'm just going to go into back into my icons for design plugin and then pop in this, another arrow. This one looks pretty good. And flip it around. There we go, there's my add note. Then there's the recipient. Not sure why, oh, I did that. Oh, everything's capitalized. Okay. Let's 
Here's the recipient information. Then we have total. And this is gonna say checkout for the final cost. And then this is honestly just being reused over and over. So I am just going to take that and drag it down. I'm doing anything that you're like, oh, I don't know how to do that. Ask me or um, you don't need to do anything fancy. Just copy and paste instead of dragging it down, copy and paste it back another version of this and do it in whatever way feels comfortable for you initially. That just gets you, that just gets you into, you know, designing. That's really the point is to like, get you into being comfortable in XD. And sometimes that's doing things in your own way and it's not having to do everything perfect in the way that other designers do it. and. Um, you don't have to do anything fancy. Just get, as long as the elements are laid out on the page, that's what matters. <laughs> okay, so there we go. We got our final screen. We've got one, two, three, four, five. This is going to be really nice to start doing prototyping with. And now we're going to get into high fidelity. Some people have been really been excited to get into them colors. So we're going to get into them colors. Okay, Sandra said, keep it simple, no video for this type of app, too many different dialects and comprehensions, text is easier. Okay, cool, yeah. Um, so as far as the, I like this, that you like to keep it simple, totally makes sense, that's really great. The only thing that with the, the dialects and the comprehension, the video is actually going to be um, a recording of the video to the, to the person who's receiving it, and the person receiving it probably understands that person's dialect and how they, um, how they talk and stuff. It just makes it more of a personalized experience, but I could see it being kind of something that's not used as much, because not as many people like to use video, um, i found. So, but that's a, that's a great idea you had there. Um, let's see, what else was here? Video could be good for leaving reviews. Yeah, okay, that's cool. I like that. What's the difference between the subtotal price and the checkout price? Yeah, so if you see in their example, they have the subtotal and then they'll have the, um, the adding the costs for the services costs, so DoorDash as a service charges, then they have delivery costs and so forth. So there's additional fees that you can't see underneath here. So it just goes down below the fold that you can, um, that you would be able to see if you can scroll under. But this checkout here is a um, is sticky at the bottom of the screen. So even though there's content below it and underneath it, you can't see it. So this is gonna be sticky. And I'm not designing the rest of it right now because it's not that important. Everything is the, the same as in the original experience. So I don't think it's really important for me to share it and show it. We're gonna just mostly be talking about the new features that we're, we're creating and the new design that we're working on. All right, let's get into it. So I'm actually gonna just drag a version of this to the side. So if you remember, we already just took a copy of the original look of the um, design and just pasted a screenshot of it here. And then this is the only place, the only part that we're replacing. So I am going to be doing a lot of stuff with an eyedropper because we don't have the color hex codes or anything like that. So here I'm going to remove the border. There's no border in this example. I'm gonna use the little eyedropper. So if you didn't see me do that, I'm gonna do it again. I'm selecting the color, using this little eyedropper here next to 100, and I'm just gonna do drop it into that color like so. This is the color I want in the background, perfect. But now the background, I mean the, um, the corners, this one you can see is really rounded and ours isn't. So I'm just gonna take the little corner and I'm going to drag this little circle inside in to make it like as similar as possible. Now, like I said, if you were really working for a company, they would already have probably these design systems for you to take in and they'll probably have all these rules like, you know, you wanna have a certain curve or, or you have a certain 
font size and everything like that, but we're gonna do our best to just eyeball it because um, this is what you're gonna do if you are doing a case study on a current app. All right, so this is going to be the same color as this. So again, I'm gonna go over to the color. I'm gonna take this little eyedropper and I'm just gonna drop it right in there. There's that color. And I am actually gonna pull in this color into my color asset, like my um, asset over here. That's right here. Um, now what I'm gonna do is this font looks a little different than this one, right? So I am going to see, can I make this, it needs to be a little bit more bold. Is it medium? That looks almost like it. Again, this is not exactly the same font, so it's never going to look exactly like it. Uh, let's try bold. Um, that's close enough. Yeah. Um, I think I like this medium better, but... Okay, cool. So send food item as a special thank you to some, as a, as a thank you to someone special. And then we hadn't talked about this. I asked, do you guys think I should put send gift or um, send, or hmm, since they're getting taken to here, the search recipient, send gift? I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one that has a problem with the words gift, but I'm like, is it send a gift? I don't know. You guys tell me if you think I should change it to something else. Now, instead of having, um, see I have a button in my design and they have like an arrow. I'm gonna do that instead. Send gift to a Maybe this is. I'm honestly not the best with coffee. There are people who are, who I work with that are much better at this than I am, who are very good with coffee. I do the best I can. Um, Cause sometimes we have to do it ourselves, right? Um, and then you don't have a coffee person. So that's what I'm doing right now. This has, a little arrow. Does anyone else here have any issues when you're designing with coffee? I feel like designers are like, you like visuals, we like flow, but like, it's gonna be a little challenging writing copy sometimes, especially very effective copy. Okay. Now this font almost looks exactly the same sizing as this font, but I can't tell. It's kind of weird that it is, to be honest. Um, not sure. Okay. And then they have like another font uh, within it that says like gives a little bit more text a little more example so um we can say something like um search for your search for send a food beverage send food beverage as a gift as or as a thank you here is what i'm gonna say gift send food beverage as a thank you gift and then um, find a friend to send to. Okay, that's going to be good enough. Now this is looking like black and then it's not bolded and it's much smaller. Looking like a 12 here. We're going to worry about um, putting in some, we're going to be worrying about putting in some images in a minute. It's looking close enough. Okay. Now let's move on to the next thing here. 
Eslam said, should I have a CTA instead of a text? Yeah, remember my design? I did the, oh, in the original design over my wireframe, I had the little button. I think that I would probably have a little button, but this is the design that they already have for ads or for new features and stuff like that. So I wanna work within their, their system. I, I don't know if I think that it's important enough for me to be like, I would wanna make a change in their um, UI to have a button, but I think that it's okay for now. Let's, let's leave it with their system for now because yeah. It's, if we wanted to make a change like that, it's probably such a, a little nightmare within a company, um, unless you really wanted to fight for it and thought that it was really gonna be very relevant and important. Okay. Maybe say it has, okay, Robert has an example, a suggestion. Say thanks in the blue, then smaller in black, send food beverage as a thank you, then send gift. Okay, so you think this part should say, the top should say, say thanks, just say thanks. I'm gonna put in here. Say thanks. And then send gift to someone special, okay? A little tighter, looks like. Okay. Cool. Thanks for that suggestion. All right, so then let's move on here to This next section, now it says, uh, I write, uh, I wrote, I write, I wrote search recipient in DoorDash. Now I'm trying to figure out what heading style is gonna work best for this because we have this version, which for me feels much more like a secondary heading where it's not as important of a heading. Um, and then we kind of have a similar one here. Then there is this very large, H1 that they use for the restaurant name and for the food item name. So those are the two that I've seen here. There might be some more in their, their designs, but we'll just work off of what we see here. So I'm going to say, let's try the H1. I know it's crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like so big that it doesn't even fit. Maybe I made mine too big. Let's like, let's compare. Nope, that's about all right. <laughs> oh, that's so big. Okay, I'm just gonna make it just a tad smaller so it fits. <laughs> And I'm just gonna drag over here a 16. So just gonna put in here like a 16 um, little gutter here so that everything aligns at 16. And the same. And the same thing for the other side. <laughs> okay. God, sometimes it's so hard to just get it. Ah. Come on. There we go. All right, so we have the search recipient in DoorDash, and then we have this first name, and then the last name. I think we're gonna need to adjust the UI a little bit. I'm gonna drag in this example over here, and let's take a look. Theirs is using this like grayish font, so let's take this, use the little eyedropper again, and eyedrop it into the gray. See how it reflected on this 
component and this component because I made this a component and this is the main one that it's going to reflect on all of the um, replicas or instances of this component. Okay, so there it is. And it looks pretty decent for the sizing and everything like that. This little line looks a little bit more faint. So I'm just going to take the appearance down a little bit. Maybe even more. Yeah, and then I'm going to just bring it all the way to that 16 there. All right, see how they have this also this little, these little gutters of 16 it seems, right? So make sure that the left and the right hit these gutters. All right. Now let's go into this CTA button. Let's bring in the red. Okay, um, I'm gonna take this and take get rid of the border and I'm going to use a little eyedropper and bring in the red. Let's see. There it is. There's the red. Okay. And then the inside of the font is white. And let's see what their call to action buttons look like. Okay. So they're a bit bold. I'm going to just say it's medium for now. Let's see. Um, it looks larger and it looks like oh. yeah this like this font size looks pretty appropriate to the their call to action um now let's see the width of it now here you've noticed that this call to action add to cart is extending all the way left and right to the page this checkout doesn't which is interesting i'm not really sure that why they would have that be different there's some inconsistency there um and then this one here it's more of like a floating action button on top so we can choose to whether extend it all the way i think i'm just going to leave it as as this um for now and it looks like they have a tiny bit of curve tiny bit of curve on their buttons as well sorry if that's like all that moving around is giving you a headache because it kind of gave me one <laughs> um all right so i'm going to just give it like a four my mouse is glitching today I just have those tech problems. Cool. That's looking more like very much like in line with their branding, right? What do you guys think? Um, Ariana says, I think adding a search by phone number field would be nice. Yeah, that is a great idea. Philip said, how about a little bit more space between the lines? Okay, between the lines. What? Which lines? These lines? Or do you mean like, which lines are we referring to? Hmm. Yeah, sorry, Philip, maybe you can just let me know which lines you mean. Okay, so we could also have the ability to um, search by first, last name and our phone number. So we could add that. Let's drag these down. I wonder which ones are going to be like, we have to figure out which ones are going to be mandatory. Does it have to be phone number? Cause you may want to be able to send it to someone like I wouldn't know my neighbor's phone number. So maybe it's, um, maybe what it is is we just have a little, or like that. in the center and just in between the two. What do you think of that then? So they can do by first and last name or by phone number. Cool. I meant the lines on the first artboard for the news.
Okay. A little more spacing between the lines. Um, yeah, I was just trying to make sure that the spacing felt similar to this one here. And it looks like, let's take a look. This is about, what does it say? A nine height? This is like, yeah, it's almost the same. So that's why I was trying to copy um, a version of it. But let's, we can put like a little tad more space. One, two, one, two, there. That can feel more good. This now, when I'm looking at it, looks more like a medium. Yes. All right, thank you for that suggestion. Let's get into getting some Peggy Sue images. So this is another awesome plugin that I use. Um, boo -boo -boo. UI faces. So I'm gonna select this shape and I'm gonna say I want a female. And honestly, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Rachel McAdams. I don't know if we should do that. Uh, let's do something like more casual looking people. Just everyday looking folks. I don't feel like we need to put models in here or anything like that. And this mat allows us to just look, it just fills them all in automatically. Boom. Boom shakalaka. I'm gonna get rid of this border. And we can change out font like more of the, this I think, hmm. I think I'm gonna make this color a little bit less prominent because I want Peggy Sue to be the thing that stands out, not necessarily the city that she's in. So I'm gonna use that darker gray instead for the location. And this is a 12 font, so I want this to be a little bit larger. Um, let's see what we're using here. What's the H3? Yeah, let's use the H3 there. Cool. And I remember we took off the select button and I think that we left it like this, although we could put little lines in between each each person as well, if we wanted to. Um, they kind of have this like, kind of a line thing going on in their, their UI design that they use. Uh, da, da, da. Let's see, I used a 24% font here. I mean, opacity. Okay, let's take a look. Line or no line, what do you guys think? How do you feel about this page? <laughs> Sean says, who remembers phone numbers anymore? <laughs> oh, I love that. Um, yeah, I don't, yeah, it's hard to remember my own phone, <laughs> phone number, right? <laughs> okay. This uh, person does not exist for UI faces is amazing. Yeah. Cool. All right, so we're done with our second page. We are basically wrapped up for today. We're gonna do the rest of the three screens tomorrow. Um, let's see, let's take a look at what we've accomplished today. So we talked about how to create a button, an artboard, we talked about typefaces, repeat grid, and components. So we went over all those basics. We went and did our customer journey map. We did user flows in Miro. We went and did sketches and wireframes. Now, if you guys missed it, I put a link to all of my sketches as well as to the UI screens for the DoorDash experience. And I put that link inside the chat for you guys to be able to create your own versions of this and to work with me. So if you wanna actually, I'm putting that back into the chat Oh, I can't put it back in there. Well, it's up at the top of the chat. Um, so if you want to design this and 
and flesh out and get to a place where I am in my design, that would be awesome because then we can start to do the rest of them together tomorrow and do the prototyping as well as sharing the designs tomorrow as well. So um, it's going to be really exciting. I'm super excited to do that with you guys. Um, oh, Tim said no line. Chris said no line. <laughs> All right, I'm putting no lines. Thank you guys. I'm going to I'm going to make that a little adjustment for tomorrow. I'll see you guys tomorrow and have a good rest of your day or night. Bye guys.